Wow, well, a lot has has happened. Oof, I got deep into this thing. Mm. I'm not even sure I can get back together again. So I took apart the switch bank. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna get up close up in a minute. And I took apart the switch. And didn't think I could, but I did. And that's the thing, I don't know if I can get back together again. Alright. So, this is the switch bank. And that very bottom is the switch I took apart. Um, right over there to the right, this is the... That's the switch push button that moves. And then this is the top casing of the switch. And then there's the innards. I see these little pieces they move they ride and they are corroded all right I see the green corrosion on them going to be rough to get back together. Go ahead and spray some deoxid on there. But at least, well, I'd like to get it back together. Jeez. Well, that deoxy works. No doubt about that. So that's how the switch works is basically the plastic plunger just pushes those little if you can see this or not. The plastic plunger pushes these little sliders back and forth and they make contact shorting things out. And I should have left them exactly where they were. Oopsie daisy, get back on there. Oh crap. There we go. Gonna move them each back and forth a little bit to work in that deox. Actually, if I can get the switch back together, I'll just keep pushing it, and that ought to do it. You know, there might be crap built up on the inside of those little sliders. that one out. Nothing really came out. Alright, so now now that that's cleaned out, the trick is to get the damn thing back together again. And I have this camera in my way, so I'm just going to have to do it without recording it and hope for the best. Because if that works, I'll be very happy. 
And it's also very awkward because I'm not going to uh, disconnect this circuit board just to work on it. I'm going to try to do it right in place right there, but it's kind okay, of awkward. Okay, so there's no way I'm going to be able to rebuild the switch. Um, but it's just, it, it was built in a factory somewhere and it's just not conducive to putting back together right here. But what I did is study the schematic. Let's see if I can find that here. <clears throat> well, anyway, I figured out which internal positions those little sliders need to be on to be out of the tape monitor mode uh, just for plain listening. And there's the positions right there. They're kind of touchy. Uh, sometimes the signal goes out if I just touch one of them it comes back on. So I know the positions. So I think if I can find a way just to basically those sliders connect two tabs together. If I could just put a hunk of solder between those two tabs where the those positions need to be and uh, complete the circuit then that would be fine if I'm able to do that and I think I'll give it a try now that I know and um, let's see if it works right now I got a Okay, so it's working. One left, right. So it's working. And it's all on that switch. <coughs> I don't need tape monitor. I don't need a tape loop. Don't want one don't want to buy parts, don't want to fix, you know, don't need that to work, so I'm going to try to solder those internal connections where they need to be. Um, it won't affect the button on the front. The button on the front is going to be just fine. Um, it'll just sit there and move around, but it won't do anything. So, that's the next goal. If I can get that done, I think this thing will work just fine. Alrighty, well, I got the and soldering iron out. A little flux. My bench is an absolute mess. I hate working in a messy environment, but I just got so engrossed in this that I just didn't want to put things away. Um, flashlight. Okay, so I made a series of solder bridges where the connections ought to be. Hopefully you can see those little solder bridges. Um, put flux on first, burned it away, and uh, first I wiped it to get the deox off and then as much as I could and then I put flux on the connectors I needed to uh, short circuit and then burned it off and put the solder right on and it flowed right in and I have bridges between the tabs that I need to according to my test so now the real test and that is to fire this thing up and again those what I have shorted there on that that old switch are is the position where the tape monitor tape monitor switch would be off and you would just be listening to things normally ah well get my glasses on and we'll plug her in I still have a signal going to it uh, yes volume knob is down Plugged in, power on, off, on, click of the relay, off, on, click of the relay. Okay. So the question is, when I turn the volume up, will we hear anything? 
and we do. It sounds like both channels. Uh, let's test the balance. One channel, the other channel. Let's see when I crank it up if the VU meters are about the same level. Yep. Turning it down from the... All right, well, uh, well, I got, now I have this mess. The faceplate is just hanging on. It's not really permanently back on yet because I need to remove it to put that switch bank back in. So at this point, let me turn it off, see if it comes back on again. It does. Sounds good, too. Sounds really good. Again, I don't have my good microphone hooked up to my camera right now, but uh, I can tell you from based on what I'm familiar with coming out of the thrusters, uh, it sounds good. Let's see. Speakers are working. I hear no distortion of any kind. So really right now is reassembly time. Reassembly time. And turning off the soldering iron time. What a mess my bench is. But I'm not going to clean up to the very end because I'm excited about getting this thing rebuilt and then be back to square one where I'd hope to be when I unboxed it. But yep, that's, well, that's, I've never had to do this kind of fix before. Um, I guess the moral of this story is when something doesn't work, start hitting every button turning every knob, every dial, um, and see if any of those in the signal path have something to do with it, because that's certainly what happened here. It was ta the tape monitor switch. Oh, boy. So anyway, I'm going to call that a day and say that that's fixed, at least. I have high hopes, and start reassembling this, and I'll get right back. Um, just FYI on reassembly. Um, in case you find it interesting, first of all, I kind of showed you this earlier, but here's here's what the innards look like. Those are the VU meters. Um, there's the movements down there. Um, there's your various potentiometers and a couple of switches. One one of those is for uh, loudness, and the other is for stereo mono. There's the mic input. And then these, these are the switches that move in and out, <coughs> that contact the switch bank back there. So first things first, putting in the switch bank. A couple screws, one on the top, one on the bottom. All right. I got the volume pot back in. It's easier to do with the front cover off. And the switch bank is back in. It's two screws. There's one on the top. And one right on the bottom. Um, and the next step is to get these bulbs back in. And fortunately, they're kind of arranged. Um, I don't remember which is which, but they're arranged in accordance with length. And they, I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but they have little grommets and they slide right in. I'm going to have to do it with two hands. But you can kind of see how it goes. Hang on. All right, the bulbs are back in. That might have been the hardest job of the day. That was challenging. You kind of push push the little really flexible rubber grommets in and give them a twist and squeeze them and and they pop they pop right in eventually. Hope I didn't damage any of the bulbs doing it because they all worked before. Okay, so volume pot back in, switch bank back in, bulbs back in. Now the front cover gets put on and 
everything's got to slide in. It's kind of tricky with these switches and the and the uh, power switch popping through. But I'm going to go ahead and put this down and do that. All right. So here's what we're looking like. Uh, front panel back on. Three screws on the top. Three on the bottom. Uh, knobs are back on. There's a lot of fingerprints on here, but believe me, this is in pretty good shape. I uh, just need to give a good cleaning. Uh, the tape monitor switch is just in there because there's no spring to pop it out. Um, the selector switches work fine. Stereo mono, loudness, all the knobs work good. Volume is nice and tight now. So before I put the bottom panel on, I think I'm going to give it another test. Eh, hang on a second. Get my signal hooked up. <clears throat> Plug it in. Just to make sure nothing happened during the assembly uh, process, which sometimes things go wrong. Okay, got the source hooked up. Speakers hooked up. Plug it in. Okay. I'll be go ahead and get a good video here in case it blows up. On, off, on, relay, off, on, relay. I turn some music on here. Okay. Balance, bass trouble, speakers. In. Okay, speakers A. <clears throat> Balance. Stereo mono. Stereo mono, mono, stereo, do loudness, loudness, horrible, horrible. Okay, so let's look at the lights here. I'm on auxiliary, the auxiliary lights on, tuner lights on, phono lights on, and the tape monitor light will not work. And there's my switch down there very bottom with my solder bridges on it. So we have effectively bypassed <clears throat> tape monitor. Okay, now I'm going to put the bottom panel on. This is parts of the old switch here, which I don't need any of it. It's not even parts I want to keep. So, bye-bye. Um... Uh, let's go ahead and unplug it. And everything else looks good. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, bottom panel. Let me, uh, I don't know if I showed you that before. Let me go ahead and tilt it up and show you what it looks like under there before I put it back together. I think I did this before, but. Uh, flashlight. So, yep. Well, anyway, here's the speaker selector switch right there, and then there's the uh, <clears throat> bass pot, treble pot, switches for loudness, stereo mono, balance, the mic mixer pot. And there's some preamplifiers. This is the preamplifier board down here. Those are the input jacks right there. And uh, those are up in there is the speaker uh, connectors. And there's the uh, power source outlets right there. And those are the fuses, speaker fuses. 
All right, so we go and get this bottom panel on. We'll go through that. Okay, rear panel on, cover on. Everything works. All right, well, that's going to conclude my first video. I'm going to I have to unbox the the tuner that goes with this and the tape deck, the cassette. Why well, I unbox it? I have to got to bring them out and test them and get them working. I think I'll wipe this thing off a little bit and uh, say goodbye to this video right now. It's, everything sounds good, no hum. Um. Everything works, except for, of course, the tape monitor won't work. Don't care. Uh, all right. I didn't want to get into this this deep hmm, before I'm taking off here, but it started bugging me, so I, you know, went ahead and fixed it. Got it working, and I'm glad. I'm glad the VU meters work and every, all the lights, everything lights up, and, and it looks nice. So anyway, enough uh, this, on this video. I guess I'm going to put all this together and in, in, uh, uh, all these videos together as part one, I suppose. Because um, I really haven't made any videos yet. Uh, so I'll just put all these together collectively and go to part two next when I, when I uh, um, start playing around with the tuner and then the cassette deck. and then um, Or maybe I'll go ahead and hook, these up, hook this up to the Bose 901s and then get my good microphone out and give a sample of what that sounds like and go from there thanks for watching ciao